Welcome to Spec Guide, I'm Max. You join me in my home today, specifically in my garage, to talk about my home charging setup because yes, I bit the bullet and I did it and uh, it's all set up now. So this is a big box. It's not actually a charger. We call it an EVSC as nerds. My car has a charger that I can plug into this because this thing is plugged into the wall with a big boy outlet. And with this big boy outlet, I can charge my car in six hours. Now you might say, Max, electric cars are electric. Can't you just plug them into the wall? And you're actually right about that. A lot of electric cars, mine included, come with mobile chargers or you can get mobile chargers as accessories for them, like this one here. If my camera adjusts for the exposure, you can see that um, there's a wall outlet in there. I can with the right extension cord and enough grit because believe it or not, I have outlets up there in the wall. They're terrifying, but I've used it. You can't charge an electric car on the wall. The issue is with my car, doing that takes like three to four days, let alone, God help me, if I have a Ford F-150 Lightning Hummer EV or some such even bigger battery vehicle. Luckily, this came, it's set up, and I'm here to tell you all about it, what home charging's like, my situation, and how it might apply to you. So, stay tuned. So charging an electric car begins with some electrical circuitry. And if you're not an electrician like I'm not, then let me explain some stuff to you. So to charge an electric car with that much faster speed than you can on a normal 110 wall outlet like we use in the US, you need a 240 volt connection, uh, either hardwired or with a special outlet. I'll insert a picture of here that we call commonly NEMA 1450. It's a standardized connector that is 240 volts. So by having higher voltage and being able to deliver significantly higher amps, you get resulting much higher power to charge your car with. And those amps come from a breaker. So in my house, I needed to install a 60 amp breaker. You can see my electrical panel here, uh, and it's kind of horrific. This thing was not set up well. This house is a little older. Some houses are even worse than this. Uh, and I did not have, you know, any fancy 80 amp or 60 amp service. We needed to get a breaker set up and we needed wiring run to my garage so that I could install my EVSE there. Now, if you're not a nerd, I'll explain what an EVSE is to you in a second, but just know it's the box right now that plugs into my car. Anyhow, you can see on the ceiling here, we've got this high, um, higher voltage, right? 240 volt, double normal household voltage uh, uh, thing going, this pipe basically, it's a cable. Uh, it's running all the way to my garage as it's insulated there. So if you join me upstairs, I'm gonna walk upstairs in my house and show you basically what's going on again in the garage. So. It's an outlet, and I mentioned you can hardwire these things. So hardwiring is an option for electrical equipment. The benefit of it is you can go further. I went to 48 amps, even though the breaker I had installed was only 60 amps. You can see what this outlet looks like here. Now, the reason I did 60 amp service for a device that only draws 48 amps is because in the electrical industry, they have what they refer to as continuous power. And an electrical car, which has a massive battery and might easily be charging for well over three hours, will raise temperatures on any equipment. And we typically rate equipment for really not only much more than one, two, three hours of continuous use. So to be extra safe, if you have an EVSC, right, this wall box, drawing 40, 48 amps, you don't just want a 48 amp breaker, you want a breaker that's a little bit higher. So for 48 amps, 60 amps was comfortable. And I'm not gonna lie, it was pricey. I'll get into cost in a second. But again, it depends on your home. These prices are all relative. And depending on how new your home is, how it's been set up, some of this might be taken care of. Maybe you're like so lucky, your garage already has a NEMA 1450 outlet, in which case you are in business or it even has a hookup and you can get something hardwired. These are all potential realities. Right now, the way this works is this box, which was sent to us by Vibor, by the way, a Chinese company that seems to make good quality hardware. The, their translation work is quite interesting. It's telling me to please insert the gun for charging. By gun, it's referring to, I believe, uh, what we call a handle uh, in the States uh, into my car. This is a J1772 connector. This is the connector. If you have an electric car, you almost certainly use, even if you have a Tesla. Teslas in the US use a different connector. However, they come with an adapter for this because it's so darn common. This is what we use to deliver um, AC, alternating current, which we get from a lot of places in the US, to our cars. 
and their onboard chargers. So Tesla's use that adapter, you probably used it, whether it's someone else's house, maybe using a unit like a charge point or some other kind of alternating current charger in public, they're extremely common. I'll show you right now. My car, of course, has a J1772 and it has DC fast charging like most modern electric cars that you should road trip do uh, by virtue of CCS, which are those extra pins. But I don't use those when I'm home charging. I just insert the gun, as Vivor calls it, or the handle into there. Uh, pardon me, I'm not gonna be outside too long. It's like raining, I'm wearing socks, and I wanna ruin them. So that's the basics of home charging. And if you have a Tesla, then you probably want to get the Tesla mo uh, connector, the wall connector. I believe it's like fairly reasonably priced, really high quality equipment. If you have a car that's not Tesla, it uses J1772 for home charging uh, as a plug. And you can honestly just use any kind of EVSE. We call these EVSEs because they supply electricity to the car, but the car's charger is on board. And this is where you also have to factor in what kind of charger you need. My car, has an 11 kilowatt onboard AC charger. It's the Polestar 2. So I can actually take up to 48 amps of service. The math there being 48 amps times 240 volts equaling about 11,000 watts or 11 kilowatts of power my car can take. And sure enough, let's plug my car in and see what it can take. It should be around 11 kilowatts. Luckily, J1772 connectors are much easier to plug in than their uh, heavier CCS brethren. So plugging that in on my car is a green light. And with my home charger, I have it set up to just start charging. You can see it's delivering voltage. Uh, right now we are sitting pretty at about 247 volts nominal. Uh, and the current is rapidly ramping up. It should peak at around, I believe, uh, well, I want to say 45 amps, even though this is technically a 48 amp box with losses or something. It usually is around 45 and it get about 11 kilowatts of power once it peaks up. It takes just a few seconds to ramp. So I like this Vivor box. They sent it to us. I don't think they paid us to sponsor them or anything, so I can say whatever I want. The translations on it are a little funky, uh, but it seems to work very well. Deliver power. It doesn't overheat or anything. It seems pretty well built too. And interestingly enough, this one, like many EVSCs you can get for your home, comes with an RFID card. So the idea being that if you install these outside, one, you want a good well-built waterproof EVSC. Please, please do not cheap out on your EVSC. I believe this Vivor unit is like $390, $400 on Amazon. That's honestly a modest price to pay. Some of these units like the ChargePoint HomeFlex, a very nice premium option, are like $750. So they can be expensive and I get it, combined with running wiring for your home. It's all a high cost, but you really don't want to monkey around with high voltage electrical equipment. My boss, Kyle, at a spec reviews, he's had a, a few issues with his home charging because of, well, some poor work on the part of the electricians. But generally, that should just go to show you, you really should get it done right by a professional and you should get a good wall box. Whether or not it's plugged in like mine or wired, get a good one, please. Like, read the reviews. Uh, our friend, uh, Tom Milani, who runs the State of Charge YouTube channel, reviews all kinds of level two home chargers and he loves all kinds of units. So many brands who make them, some made in the US, some made in China, all kinds of different price levels. Just please get a good one. There are many out there. But I got sidetracked. What is this card? This is an RFID card, right? Um, the purpose of this is to basically function as a security if you have the charger outside because this charger is IP rated. So it's rated for a little bit of water resistance if it's like raining like it is today. I have it installed in my garage, so not very relevant. And it has a security by way of this card. You could put it in your wallet, wherever, but basically it just forces you to tap that to pay and activate it so that random Nissan Leaf drivers in your neighborhood can't just park in your driveway and steal your electricity. Fair enough. I don't have that issue because mine's in the closed part of my garage and you can see where my priorities in life lie because my bikes get to share the garage and my car doesn't. We leave our cars outside so I just have the charger sitting in the garage with the cable going under the garage door. Works for me and as a result I don't need authentication so in the charger settings for this Vivor unit I was able to with some interesting translation go into the menus and change that. Different chargers and EVS, sorry, EVSCs, chargers for alternating current are in the car. When you use a station like Electrify America on the road, DC fast chargers, those are uh, 
chargers that go directly into the car and bypass the car's onboard charger. These EVSEs provide power to the car's charger. It's nerdy, but I, I do want to teach you guys correctly. Anyhow, so these EVSEs have all kinds of smart capabilities, and this is where cost comes in. So let me just be fully candid. What did it cost for me to set this up? Well, like I said, this unit, I believe is around $400, but Vivor sent it to us, which is great. So thanks for that. Um, but you know, you can get those and that might seem expensive, but depending on your home situation, like mine, Honestly, the wiring is what exp is expensive. I used a uh, EV charging pros. They're just no sponsor, no relationship. I just found them. They seem well reviewed. They install their Tesla certified, whatever that means. So they mainly install wiring runs and actually chargers for Tesla owners. But I told them, look, all I need is the Nemo 1450. I already have the EVSE. Just give me the outlet, the breaker service, the wiring. So all that work cost about $1,700 because they needed to run about 55 feet of this higher voltage wiring through my house, install the breaker, etc. And then I gave the electrician like a 10% tip. So in total, it was like $1,900, $1,900, almost two grand, pretty rough. However, it is such a convenience to have charging at home for your electric car that's reliable, high speed, and basically with my Polestar 2, for instance, which has a 78 kilowatt hour gross battery, I could come into my house dead, and I mean like dead, dead, out of spec style, like 0% battery, and I could be back up to full if I wanted to within about seven to eight hours. That is awesome. I love having that assurance, that security that this gives me. Uh, when I leave for road trips, I can reliably know I'll be at full, uh, full charge. And I like to drive a lot, so for me it works. Now, maybe you don't need this. Like if you have a plug-in hybrid or even a full electric vehicle that has a smaller battery or maybe you don't drive that often, maybe you can get by with a wall connector and an extension cord. I mean, it certainly is a lot cheaper if your house doesn't have the existing service and set up for higher voltage charging. However, for me, this made a lot of sense. And it could make sense for you too and actually lower the cost if you look into power company incentives because my power company in Colorado is Excel Energy. And they specifically have a rebate program like many utilities do nationally, I believe. Check your utility was the website. But they have a program where I can enroll to charge an off-peak hours with a special approved charger from them. Sorry, specially approved EVSE. Um, and they would give me $500 or $1,300 depending on income. Uh, but basically a, a big chunky rebate off the cost of home wiring, just as a check or a statement credit on your server, something like that. That is pretty compelling. Uh, $1,300 if your income qualified for Excel specifically would cover, I think, a lot of the cost for setting up the wiring for most people. However, why don't I get that money? I wish I did. I looked into it uh, because of this bot EVSC. Even though I can technically on this EVSC, I can set a charging delay and I can manually know when to plug in. Like I'm smart enough to know that with my car, I plug in at night because well, one, it suits my schedule and two, it's called off peak hours. It's when electricity is cheapest and at its lowest demand. So I just plug in overnight. However, Excel Energy and I believe many utility companies want to be able to control this and like do it the smart way, quote unquote, where the charger is like Wi-Fi connected and has all this like capability to know your current RAID and all that. Um, so they've required two EVSCs, either one by I think the charge point, uh, HomeFlex, and then another one, I forget the name, it's called the juice box something, but another high-end unit that we're talking like $700 equipment. So. <sighs> This is a complicated situation. I'm actually renting this house and I plan to stay here for a bit. Uh, this is not like a short term arrangement, but I am still renting this nonetheless. So for my uh, housemate and the owner of this home, it was an easy argument to make for her, to, for me to say, look, I'm gonna pay for this. This is gonna improve the value of your property, getting this NEMA 1450. And when I move, uh, I can easily take this box with me um, and, leave it out of her garage and now she has the NEMA 1450, she can do with it as she wants. I was happy to make that investment. However, that's, you know, probably not super smart financially because I'm renting this place. So I didn't really want to do hardwired and then another really fancy charge point home flex unit. I know those are really good units. Kyle toured the charge point facilities actually and saw how they're built. They're super quality units. I mean, the, they have these like cable handles. So instead of having to like have your cables strewn all over the floor, it has cable management integrated. It's a really nice 50 amp unit. It's got the eligibility for a lot of state utility companies. Um, incentive programs. So that's really cool. 
but um, it just didn't make sense in my situation. Nonetheless, I would really like to get, uh, get a hold of one of those, take a look, um, and I'm just making this as a PSA for you guys to not get screwed on the rebate, because I was expecting to receive that rebate, but I didn't really look at the fine print until, well, after this had all been set up. So I will just say, look out for those rebates because they do exist and if it makes sense for you to buy one of these smarter wi-fi connected evscs in many cases like the charge point one which you can actually sometimes control from the app see the state of charge not just on your vehicle's app like if you have a tesla or a polestar but also through the charger you can control the times of the day it charges you can do all kinds of fun nerdy things if you're into saving money or into getting those power company rebates, these can make a lot of sense. So that's been my rant on home charging, my experience with it, the cost, the drawbacks, for me, the benefits, and I hope that's been super helpful. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to have it. it. It's nice. I plunked a lot of money down on it, probably more than I should have for a place I rent, but hey, um, now it's set up. I don't have to think about charging so much of the time. That, for me, honestly, makes all the difference. It is super convenient. So, hope this was helpful for you. If you've already installed home charging or have your own suggestions to add, please do share them in the comments. If you have questions, do that as well. We're at a spec guide, our job's to help you. So we're happy to answer questions. I've been Max, and I will see you in the next video.